Hi, my name is Sydney Hazlett and I'm with Sockeye Consulting. Today I'm going to take you through a few of my favorite tips and tricks on entering data in Sage Intact. So here we are in Sage Intact starting at the home page. I'm going to go up to the top right, find my name, click on it, and click on my preferences. I'm going to scroll about three quarters of the way down in my preferences and then get to a part that says personalized page defaults. So a couple of things on here that I would change immediately are the list screens. So the records per page is usually defaulted to 20 when you have a new system or have a new user in a new system. I like to max that out at 9.99. And that's where you go into the customers, the vendors, the projects, those screens. And that way you can see all of the different records in one page. And you can also use the control F feature in any browser to search through those. So if you have them all on one page, it makes your searching functionality much quicker. There are a couple other good ones in here, um, expanding out how many items can show up in a drop down, um, the amount of entry lines and transactions, so an invoicing and AP bills. And then this one I especially like, it's the transaction table, so rows per page. Once you've created a transaction, um, and you're going in to look at it, this is how many rows would show up allowing you to view at one time so you don't have to click next, next, next to view all the details. A couple of other really helpful things in here. So automatically insert a decimal point in numbers. And then one that a lot of people like if you're an accountant who uses the 10 key is this enter instead of tab to move between fields. So everything that you, all the changes that you make on this screen are your personal preferences. And so they won't affect other users. The next item we're gonna look at is screen layouts. So I'm just gonna open a journal entry for an example. Your fields here in the first line, you have a good amount but you can click the show details and you see a lot more fields. So if you have a user that's always having to enter a um, employee or an item, um, some other dimension or field that's down here, it's a little bit cumbersome to have to expand this out, go to your next row and be able to fill, fill out these extra fields each time. So if you go to more actions in the top right, edit entries layout, then I can actually drag and drop where things are appearing on my page. So I move the employee dimension up to the entry line. And if I click this box, it's gonna affect the add, edit, and view pages for the journal entry. I'll click that and click save layout. Now this is going to affect every user in your system and only admins can make the change. So personal preferences that we looked at before just change for the user, this changes it across all users. Just be careful in case someone else might be using the system in a slightly different way. The other thing I wanna look at on this screen is when you're tabbing through the fields, if you want to go up and down a line, you can hit Alt, down arrow, or Alt, up arrow, and jump between lines. So that becomes really helpful if you wanna go ahead and put in all of your amounts. You can do it over many lines at once. Okay, the next item I wanna look at is recurring transactions. So this will help get your data in here much more quickly. Um, these are in several different places in Intact. We have recurring journal entries here. We also have recurring AP bills or recurring invoices, recurring order entry transactions or purchasing documents. So let's add a recurring bill. You would put in your information just like you would in any monthly bill. Say we pay our standard amount on ABC Electric. And you have to give it a sequence number if it's gonna be automatic so it knows how to number them. It defaults to the term of the vendor. And I'm gonna scroll down and say, this is for office expense other, $100 a month. Go ahead and fill in my location. 
and then I can give it a schedule. So starting today, I want it to repeat every month and never end. Save. And now it's going to recreate that bill on a monthly basis. So it saves the data entry there. You can also do that with journal entries. Um, and like I said, uh, AR invoices. We're going to go into bills and one more feature to get your data in here quickly is when you're viewing a object or an entry record in Sage Intact, most items have a duplicate feature. And so this is going to carry forward all the information from that bill, but to create a new one. So if you have something very simple, you can use a templated um, record if it's a customer vendor project, etc. Or if it's a bill or an invoice record, you can duplicate it and then edit only the fields that have changed. Okay, and my last but favorite tip and trick for ensuring that your data entry is quick is using some keyboard shortcuts for date fields. So you can see here, if you type T, it's going to pull it to today's date. If you type W, it will go to the first day of the week. And K goes to the end of the week. Same with month. So the first day of the month, the last day of the month, and year. First day is Y, last day is R. And then plus or minus will get you one day ahead or one day behind. So what's really interesting about this is instead of typing in the last day of the prior month, I can just type MMH. So one M gets me to the first day of this month. Another M gets me to the first day of the prior month. And then an H gets me to the end of that month. So it makes it really quick where I'm not having to type the full date in on any of these. I'm gonna move this down and show it up here. So today it says 5-1-2022. I'm gonna type T. So that gets it to today's actual date, 6 27 22. And let me scroll in a little bit just so you can see it better. 6 27 22. So if I do the minus sign, I'm going to go back one day. If I do the plus sign, I'll go forward one day. But let's say I want to go to the last day of the prior month, which would be 5 31 2022. I can do MMH and get there in three clicks. And it takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but the same can be done with the year, YYR, I get to the last day of the prior year, or if I wanted to go back five years, YYYYYR. Um, so it just makes it really quick instead of having to pull open the calendar or having to type in a date. That is my number one favorite data entry efficiency. And always reach out if you have any questions or want to look at how you can speed up your processes. Thanks.